What's up, y'all? If you're new to the channel, my name is Darcizzle, and this is Brian, aka Puddin. And today we are going on a road trip and on an adventure. But first, we want to thank a couple people. Yeah, we're going to Apalachicola, Florida, on the Panhandle. Well, I'll get the pronunciation right over <laughs> over yeah, this trip. Yeah, they'll correct us. <laughs> yeah, we want to give us. We've never been to the Panhandle before, so we're super excited, and we're going to be going for hopefully Red Snapper and Grouper and whatever else. We want to give a special thanks to Bay City Lodge. That's where we're going to be staying. Check those people out when you come up there, and we're going to have all kinds of footage of that. And and also, uh, special thanks to Landshark Lager. Yes. Uh, our, one of our main sponsors, our biggest sponsor, and uh, they help us go on all these trips so we can bring some great fishing to you. So uh, let's get going, Sizzle. We're only about three hours late. <laughs> <laughs> A little late, but you know what? Better late than never. So the journey starts now. Let's go. Let's go. I gotta turn the hose off. All right. I just, no, I did that. You did that. Yeah. He's on it. Eat it, eat it, eat it. There he is. Oh, he's off. No, wait. There he is, there he is. Hooked up. All right, y'all, we finally made it out here. We are out in the Gulf of Mexico. We had a little bit of a run today, about a 25 mile run. Gorgeous morning here. You can see these conditions. It's like a lake out here today. And I am hooked up on a fish. We don't get to enjoy flat calm conditions like this very much, so blessed to be out here today. And I'm fishing with Outlaw Fishing Team, part of the Atlanta Saltwater Sportsmen's Fishing Club, and they are having their, tor their tournament this, well, the next couple days here out of Apalachicola, Florida, and it's called the Hard Bottom, right? The Hard Bottom Classic. All right, so we got a fish on. We're targeting red snapper at this particular spot. And I see this fish down deep. He's coming up. He is gorgeous. Oh yeah, beautiful red snapper. Sick, sick, solid fish. Oh, that's a stud right there. I don't get to catch a lot of red snapper if you guys watch my channel. Dude, look at that fish. <laughs> stud, that's a solid eight, nine, maybe 10 pound snapper right there. Check out that gorgeous fish. Just like that, broke off the skunk. Woo, he just peeked up a bunch of stuff. You can see we have, we're using really heavy duty circle hooks. Hooked up on the other side of the boat already. This spot is on fire this morning. There he is, y'all, there's, hold on. <laughs> there he is, guys, look at that beautiful red snapper. One of my first in a very, very long time. Stud fish. Let's get Rods right back down and catch some more. Oh, 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 oh. He's on, <laughs> just like that. All right, that lure doesn't even done falling yet. I got a nice fish on. I'll show you what we're using. What's it called? Uh, Boston mackerel we're using, sorry. I don't get to use those baits too often. All right, fish is coming up. This is so much fun. It's instantly fish on at this spot. But red snapper, you only can catch them certain days of the year. They're highly restricted species, even though their numbers are coming back pretty well even on the east coast where we live people catch them further north from where we fish uh, but again you're allowed to keep them certain times of the year so that's what we're doing now we're allowed to keep 12 fish today and i'm sure we're going to reach our limit real quick it's coming up i can see him way down there deep color nice crazy another one he's like his twin the other one i caught before sick Look at his stomach too, he's all full. Huge one. That's a stud. Having a blast already catching two fish in just a matter of moments. And now we're gonna get lines back out and see what else we can get down there. But everybody's trying to get their limit today. Everybody's trying to get some red snapper, so. 
It's a good day already. Not complaining. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> on. There we go. There we go. Nice. All right, you guys can see that I've switched my gear now. I'm using a conventional setup and I'm fishing the bottom. And I just had a big old piece of mullet out, butterfly mullet. Oh, this guy's trying to rock me up. Gotta get him off the bottom. All right, so there could be easily grouper here and snapper on the bottom. We're trying to find the bigger snapper. Oh, come on, buddy. Dude, this fish. Oh. There it goes. Woo! Give me a run for my money. This rod is rated for 200 pounds. Extra, extra heavy Shimano Travel rod. And you can see this fish is doubling it over. This fish is no joke. I think I might have a grouper on. It's not fighting like a snapper. But you never know. Color. Oh, it's a snapper. It's a huge snapper. It's a huge snapper. He's huge. Oh my gosh. He's huge. This is gonna be my biggest ever. Right here. Heck yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Do you see that fish? <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh my God. All right, so you can see the Captain Mike Springer putting us on the fish today on his beautiful boat. And he's been coming to this spot in Apalachicola for over 30 years. He knows where the big boys live. That's the third fish in the boat for me. That is a stud trophy red snapper right there, baby. Look at that thing. Oh my God. Sick. That fish is all day 20, probably pushing 25. That thing is monstrous. Look at the belly. Ah, that's insane, dude. Holy sh This fish is evil, easily twice the size of that first fish you guys saw, saw earlier. But yeah, so just so you guys know that this is not Photoshop, because why are you holding it up with one hand? Because I can lift 20, 25 pounds in one hand. See? <laughs> no problem. So that's how I hold him for a picture. Not fake, guys. Just saying. All right, let's get him in the fish box because we gotta get more big fish. But totally sick to share my personal best red group, red snapper with y'all. Look at the color. Sick. That's a sick fish. Thank you so much. I've never caught a button that big. That's my biggest snapper ever. Is he there? Yes. He's there. There you go. Fish is coming up, just like that. Oh, now he knows he's hooked. Oh, doubling that rod over. Holy cow, another monster. And like I said, I'm fishing with Captain Mike Springer, and we've also got Bill Fish Bob, Ed, and... Randy. Randy, Randy <laughs> on the boat, sorry. Had a mind blank there. And we are slaying fish. We got another monster coming up, and I actually see other uh, snapper following him. A little smaller than the first one, but it's still another nice fish. Oh yeah, heck yeah, look at that. That's a big I fish. I just can't believe like how instant this is, instantaneous. As soon as the bait goes down, within a minute of that, they, they freaking take it. And that's another nice keeper fish that we're gonna keep. But basically, you know, if we get anything under 10 pounds, we're making decisions to throw them right back into the water, let them grow bigger. And we're just looking for those big boys today. So another stud, awesome. <laughs> Getting my workout today. All right, that was crazy. So Randy was hooked up and I was dropping my bait on the other side of the boat. And then my line accidentally got wrapped on his fish. And so I was hooked on him for a while, but then we got it freed. And as soon as it got freed and I put the, the, the uh, rod back in gear, the rod doubled over. How, what a beautiful day. This is a stud. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. I think it might be bigger than the other one. Oh my God, guys, look at that. There he is. Look at that beast. Stud red snapper, heck yeah. Look at him, sick. That is a freaking toad. That's a nice fish. I wanna tell you guys a little bit about the gear that we're using today. You see here, this is a Boston mackerel that we're using. We're cutting off the tail. We're just butterflying the end piece here. So we'll get a little bit of scent and meat into the water. 
And I'm just gonna show you how we rig this and show you my rig and everything. But you can see we've got two circle hooks here, one acting as a stinger rig on it. And what I do is I take the top circle hook, which is a nine aught, probably uh, three times strong, must add circle hook or four times strong, heavy duty, right through the upper jaw, I mean bottom jaw through the upper jaw. And then we're gonna take the stinger rig and we're just gonna try to stick it in the meat somewhere and stick it in there pretty good so that way the fish can't steal the bait from me. Something like that. Here we've got a 100, 100 pound fluorocarbon leader and this is approximately probably four or five feet long. And then that is connected to our weight here. We got these little fancy weights that uh, Captain Mike has made himself. And we got a big heavy duty swivel on the other side to attach the weight. And then we've got a little bit of a top shot of another 100 pound floral leader here. And then I got it to my reel and my combo. And I'm using the Shimano Trinidad and it's paired with the Shimano Long Jig Special Rod. And that's pretty much it. I believe this is 80 pound, um, 80 pound braid as the main line. And that is the combo we are using to rip these big fish up from the bottom. I put a dead pinfish on, actually. These porpoises are coming. Just telling you, we're going down for your fish. You're never going on fish. Porpoises are coming. Porpoises are coming. All right, we're about to switch spots and we're actually sending down a fish that blew up too much. But this is somebody else's beautiful, actually Ed caught this monster mangrove snapper. I wanted to come to the bow to check it out in the fish box. This thing is massive. It's probably the biggest mangrove snapper I ever did see. It just goes to show you how big they catch, how big they get. And if you guys know, and you've been following my channel, you knew I, you knew I grew up catching these things. But not, nothing ever this big. That is a freaking tank. What a fish. All right, just wanted to show you, but let's get back to fishing. Oh, found it again. There he is. Come on. That doubled over. Wow, he just took it home. Dude. Crushed it. Crushed it. My forearm is cramping really bad. <laughs> you got a drink. It's a weird cramp, you know. Look at this freaking tank right here. <laughs> Look at this fish. Let me get the circle hook out. You can see he must have circle hook right in the corner doing his job. Just popped right out just another like that. Fish. Yeah, it's another stud. Jeez. Oh, yeah, man. Is this a hole? <laughs> Bob, you did good on the coop. Sick. <laughs> I'm glad you oh like my God. Dude, look at these fish. Oh. This one is like Bob's so blown up, he looks like he's fake. Look at that thing she's got. <laughs> Oh my gosh, another tank for me! I'll take it. Even though I didn't get any big mangroves yet, I will take monster red snapper that I never get to catch back home. That is another all day easy 20 pound fish right there. Absolute stud. Woo! You can see snapper teeth in there. He's puking up some guts. It actually smells, but that is a toad! Heck yeah! <laughs> One arm snapper. Fake. <laughs> Not fake. Fake. <laughs> Actually, it's not fake at all. I'm just saying. Yes, yes. yes baby. Yes. Grouper into the boat and it's a caper. Oh, he's barely hooked. Oh. Come on, buddy. You have the other hook on you. Yeah! We got a caper! <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did, yeah. right? That's definitely. Great. Oh, yeah, definitely. Woo! Heck yeah. Yes. On a dead bait. Beautiful gag grouper. My first keeper in quite a while. Probably my personal best as well. I don't catch a whole lot of grouper. There isn't a whole lot of grouper back home where we live in our home waters, but that is a beautiful fish. It's changing color. Grouper are so delicious to eat. Look at this fish box, guys. Oh my gosh. I've never seen so many giant snappers, and now we got a keeper grouper in the boat, but I need to get back right back to fishing. Bye.
Back at the fillet table, we got that monster red snapper that I caught. And I'm here with a bunch of guys filleting all their casts from today. And you can see everybody's busy at work filleting fish. And we're right here at Bay City Lodge, of course. And the guys inside are filleting fish as well. Um, and they just turned on the music for me so I can do this for you guys live. So let's dive right into this. Using my nine inch fillet knife from Smith's, from Smith's Consumer Products. And you see I'm just making that cut right behind the gill plates here. This fish, look at these, these scales. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So you're gonna want a sharp knife. They're gonna dull your knife real quick. So you always wanna make sure you have a sharpener with you as well. And this gentleman actually has a Smith sharpener right here so you can see that fishermen love Smith sharpeners so you guys should definitely go to their website and check out their information there and uh, use my coupon code darsizzle15 for 15% off your order plus free shipping and all that information is going to be down below so just made that cut up right by the backbone here made the initial cut now I'm just going to run the big blade through the fish right along the edge of the bones here and we're going to get a nice huge fillet off this sucker and I'm so excited to have Red Snapper because we do not get to catch them, like I said in the video, uh, back home too often. So this is a monster, my biggest ever. I am so stoked. Can't wait to check out this filet. It's going to be snow white. All right, now we get down. And this shot, I, I just sharpened this knife actually too, and it's super, super sharp. Now we're going to get break these pin bones up here. He's sliding a little bit. Me being a left-handed, I'm going to turn them up a little bit. Just like so. And they got a really raised stomach and bones in here that you can clearly see. So just following it back down. I'm trying to keep the innards intact, like I always say, because I don't want that all over my filet. Just like that. And you can see that those rib cage bones are still intact. And then we're going to take that blade. Keep it right on the edge here and whack off this huge, beautiful filet. Look at that, y'all. Look at that filet. So pretty. It's not even cooked yet. That is going to be delicious, amazing. I am stoked. So we're going to finish up the other side of this fish. You can see exactly how I did that. And you know what? There might even be snapper cheeks in here. Let's check that out real quick. And then uh, I'm going to get back to filleting the other side. But usually fish have cheeks. And the bigger the fish is, these cheeks are usually very, very tender. They're like the best part of the fish. Oh, yeah, he's got a nice cheek. So let's try to take this out. And this is how I do it. Just kind of outline it with your knife. And you can feel in there where the cheek meat goes. And you see there's a big old piece of cheek right there. Oh, that's going to be delicious. A lot of you guys asked me how I was doing that on my other fish, filleting cheek meat out. And of course, you want to do that on grouper, too. Grouper is actually more known for cheek meat, but check that out. Beautiful piece of meat. And you actually see it's just slightly different and not the same texture as the filet over here. So that is going to be amazing. I'm going to finish up the other side of this fish, though. Just like that, we got it done. And once again, if you want to learn for more information on the knives and the sharpeners and stuff, that's going to be down below in the description. And I usually go to my 7-inch blade, but today I'm using my 9 for the big fish. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other side here, and then we're going to meet you back in the kitchen for the cooking portion of this video with cooking with pudding. Another great job flaying that red uh, snapper dog sizzle, and welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. And we're back at the house. We flayed those fish over at the fish camp, and we're back. And look at this right here. I uh, marinated a little bit in a marinade of uh, olive oil, Worcestershire sauce, thyme, and a little bit of, uh, I don't even remember what else, paprika maybe. And then I got these things to put on the top. I got lemon and onions and butter and garlic. So uh, let's get right to it. I got the grill warmed up. We're gonna throw it in the barbecue. I also wanna mention, I think this is the first time I'm in the video. I was doing some editing, so it's nice to see you guys finally. <laughs> so I'm just gonna throw this right on. Now I got it on a half shell. You notice Darcy left the, the skin on, the scales. And you can do this recipe on a half shell with Ooh, all sorts of fish that are really gonna have scales, like redfish. We've done it with vermilions. This would work with striped bass up north. This kind of stuff has a nice, um, you know, nice scales on it to protect the meat from that fire. I got a bug on me. All right, now I am gonna put on some of these delicious things right up on top and cook it up. So, first I think, let's put some garlic on. Butter. I actually froze the butter so it melts a little bit slower. And I'll put more on later. 
now some onions. Look at this. And then you gotta have some acid and everything, so we're just gonna put some lemons on top of here. All right, now we're gonna close it. Now typically, raise that camera up, Sizzle. Now you, the recipe, or most people, or a lot of people, will put this the meat side down to get some grill marks on it, and then flip it over. And I've done that a couple times. I, I didn't really like how that turned out. Uh, so I just put it in there, uh, one side, close it, and it cooks like an oven and like a barbecue. And uh, so this is gonna take about 15 minutes to cook, and we're gonna check it a couple times just to make sure. But I just wanna remind you guys, just wanna say special thanks to the Atlanta Saltwater Sportsman's Club. Went fishing with those guys all weekend. It was totally awesome. If you're in Georgia, particularly the Atlanta area, check those guys out. They're such a great bunch of guys and, and you'll do some saltwater fishing and learn a ton. And also, of course, Land Shark Lager, our uh, great sponsor. All right. Oh, lastly, it's Father's Day. Uh, we're filming on Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all you guys. And Darcy put some real nice uh, tributes to her dad who unfortunately passed away about a year and a half ago on Instagram and Facebook. If you wanna take those, check those out, there's some pictures of Darcy in there and she was super, like a baby. So uh, again, we'll be back 15 minutes. All right, guys, looks all done. It took about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It's really thick. I'm going to attempt to pick it up, these two things, and put it in this tray. Noish. Big tip from pudding. Here's how you clean the grill. I do it both ways, and I'm done. See you inside for this delicious meal. All right, our sizzle. Let's do it. I forgot to mention you in the last clip he had his glasses on. Think so? Huh? His that's, reading glasses. That's because I can't see. He never shows that. No, I, I think they've been on before, but no, not usually. Now this, I think this is actually paleo. We got it with some broccoli. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Very delicious. I love onion and garlic, so can't go wrong with that. Always super good. It's coming right off the skin, no problem. No problem. I added some garlic and some more butter in the middle off camera. So, you know, and it, with this kind of recipe, you can really just do whatever you want. You can put tomatoes on there, whatever spices. A lot of recipes are cayenne pepper, so just put it on the grill, throw whatever crap you want on there, and you're all set to go. Yeah, basically. Like, you can put whatever the <laughs> heck you want on there. And you don't need to be so specific either. You can put as much or as little as you want, whatever the heck it may be. And honestly, you might even want to make this marinade so it's like, it like covers the entire filet too, so it really soaks in there. It's your call. This is more of like a dry rub, but this was like super good as well. I mean, either way, it can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with it. All right, we got another video coming up from Apalachicola. Mm -hmm. I can pronounce it now. And uh, until then, Geez, he did it like 20 seconds before I could even swallow. Until then, follow <laughs> your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. <laughs>